Welcome back. Let's check in on the day's major sports stories with Olumide Macaulay. Thank you, Amarati. Welcome to Sports News. We start with football. Nigeria's Aimba will face Raya Casablanca of Morocco in the first leg of the CAF Confederation Cup semi-finals in Aba on Wednesday. The two-time African champions trash Ryan Sports of Rwanda 5-1 on aggregates to set up an exciting semi-final tie against former African champions Raya Casablanca. Casablanca scored four times in away ties in the group stages and scored twice at Cara Brazzaville as they defeated the Congolese side 3-1 on aggregate in the quarterfinals. Meanwhile, Tunisia referee Yusuf Esfiari will officiate the game scheduled for 2 p.m. Nigeria time while his compatriots Yamin Maluchi and Ayman Ismail will serve as assistant referees. To the UEFA Champions League, David Silva's dramatic 87th minute strike got Manchester City off the mark in this season's Champions League with victory away to Hoffenheim. Zeko scored thrice as Roma trounced Victoria Plans. 5-0, while CSK Moscow shocked holders Real Madrid 1-0. Paula Dybala scored a hat-trick as Juventus defeated Swiss side Young Boys to register the club's best ever start to a season. Manchester United failed to ease the pressure on manager Jose Marino with a goalless draw against Valencia at Old Trafford. Police in Las Vegas have reopened a sexual assault investigation from 2009 at the request of a woman who's alleged she was raped by Cristiano Ronaldo. Catherine Mayaga says she was attacked by the Portuguese footballer in a hotel room in the U.S. city that year. The Juventus forward has dismissed the claim, first reported in Germany, as fake news. His representative said he will take legal action against the magazine. The police confirmed they had investigated a complaint in June 2009, but added they had no suspect in the case. Away from football, the president of the Women's National Basketball Association, Lisa Borges, is stepping down from her position following three successful seasons. Since joining the WNBA in 2016, Borders has accelerated the league's growth in several key areas. In 2017, the WNBA recorded its highest regular season attendance in six years and provided new ways for fans to engage with the league through live streamed games on Twitter. NBA Deputy Commissioner Mark Tatum will oversee the WNBA on an interim basis and a search for a new league president will commence immediately. In tennis, U.S. Open finalist Juan Martin Del Potro brushed aside Spain's Albert Ramos Vinola 7-5-6-2 to reach the China Open second round. Del Potro playing his first match since losing to Novak Djokovic in the U.S. Open final last month looked in fine form as he fired 10 aces and won 86% of points to seal victory in 90 minutes. The 30-year-old Argentine can qualify for next month's ATP Finals in London for the first time since 2013 if he reaches the final in Beijing. Bulgaria's Grigor Dimitrov also advanced to the second round after beating American tennis Sangren 7-5-6-3. That's it on Sports News. I'm Archie's back with the rest of the news at 10. Thanks, Alumide. Indonesia is dealing with a major crisis following the earthquake and tsunami that struck on Friday, now leaving over 1,000 people dead. The 7.5 magnitude quake struck just off the central island of Sulawesi, setting off a tsunami that engulfed the coastal city of Palu. While the government says it's doing all it can to return to people's needs, Calls increasing for food, fuel, and water. One of the worst hit cities in the Indonesian island of Sulawesi saw 1,700 houses in one neighborhood being swallowed up by the tsunami, with hundreds believed to be buried. Blocked roads, a damaged airport and broken telecommunications have made it difficult to bring help into the affected area and impossible to contact more remote regions. The military has taken over the airport to fly aid in and injured people and other evacuees out. 
but for thousands of people wanting to get the first commercial flight out of Palu, the wait continues. Many people are having to sleep in makeshift shelters or on the street with little access to food or medication. Meanwhile, authorities began burying victims of the devastating earthquake and tsunami on the island of Sulawesi in a mass grave dug on Monday. So far, over a thousand people have been confirmed dead. Rescuers have yet to reach many affected areas, leading to fears the death toll could rise again. Indonesia has faced intense and deadly earthquakes before. In 2004, a tsunami struck Southeast Asia, killing 120,000 people in the country. Questions are now being asked about why warning systems set up after that disaster appeared to have failed. And the main news again, the National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress today postponed the Lagos State Governorship Primary indefinitely of a rising tension. The committee said it needed more time to plan properly for the election. Also today, APC National Chairman Adam Soshomole declared Imo APC governorship primary results as fake. The party also disbanded the committee that conducted the primary headed by Mr. Ahmed Gulak. And death toll from Indonesia's earthquake and tsunami today rose above 1,300 as the nation has been mourning since Friday when the incident happened. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.